Hi everyone, my name is Leanne and today I'm going to be telling you all about my entire non-fiction TBR. So all of the unread non-fiction books that are on my shelves. You're probably aware that it is non-fiction November at the moment. And I have done a video where I was talking about the books that I would like to prioritise reading for non-fiction November. But it's quite possible I will get to a few of these other books as well. For the sake of this video being complete, I am going to be talking about the books that I did mention in that video. But I'm just going to whiz past those books. If you want to hear more about them, I will leave that video linked down below in the description and in the cards as well. To be fair, I have, I think, between 15 and 20 books to talk to you about, so it could be quite a whistle-stop tour anyway. And I'm not going to be talking about any books I have digitally either, so they're kind of like out of sight, out of mind a lot of the time. So I have two books that are kind of on the same topic. The first of those is The Birth of the Pill by Jonathan Icke, and then I have A Period Power by Maisie Hill. Now obviously these aren't about the exact same topic, but they are kind of linked. The Birth of the Pill... The Birth of the Pill, of course, is about pill, which I have been on and off throughout my life and recently came off. And I'm interested in learning more about the pill, but also how to make my menstrual cycle work for me. I have actually started this book, but I'm not very far in at all. I think it is a book that you kind of have to pay a lot of attention to. So yeah, not the exact same topic, but like linked. Again, two books that are on similar topics and by the same author. So I have Chavs by Owen Jones and The Establishment by Owen Jones. Owen Jones is like a political journalist and commentator who I agree with most of the time. These are his first two books and I think he has a third book coming out quite soon. Chavs is about this kind of Chav stereotype that exists in Britain and how it demonises the working class and the establishment is about kind of the political elite and how they get away with so much shit. And these are both books that have been on my TBR for such a long time and I really do need to get around to reading them. They are still unfortunately really relevant. I have No Fixed Abode by Maeve McLenahan. This is a proof copy. This is about homelessness in Britain today and it's meant to really challenge your assumptions about homelessness and deepen your understanding of quite how devastating this problem is. I have Decolonizing the University which is published by Pluto Press. This is one of the books I would like to prioritise reading for non-fiction November and it is kind of what it says on the tin. It is about the kind of racial injustices that are embedded in universities and how we can actively attempt to decolonize them. I also want to prioritise reading Sex Robots and Vegan Meat by Jenny Kleeman, which is all about scientific developments which are changing and are on the brink of changing our lives. It's like Black Mirror, but non-fiction. I have When Breath Becomes Air by Paul Kalanithi, which is all about a doctor who he himself then falls ill. This is meant to be a really emotionally hard-hitting one. I also have The Mixer by Michael Cox, which is a book all about football tactics. I have Mermaids and Fairies by Sky Alexander. I read another book in this series of books, which was all about unicorns a couple of months ago and I thought it was a really fun read. They're basically just looking into like the history and mythology around these mythical creatures and what they've kind of come to represent and mean for different people and their representations throughout art and literature. I'm really looking forward to reading these ones because I found the first one just a lot of fun. I also have Dear Reader by Kathy Rensenbrink. This is probably one of the most visually beautiful books that I own. I have read two of Kathy Rensenbrink's other books and I really liked both of those. This book is basically a celebration and an exploration of the joys of reading. I love books about books and I think this one's going to be a real comfort to read at the moment. I have Daily Rituals Women at Work by Mason Curry. This is another one that I would like to prioritise reading for Nonfiction November. This book is all about successful women and how they were successful and what kind of daily rituals and daily routines they implemented in their lives. As someone who would also like to be a successful woman, I think I will gain a lot of inspiration from reading this one. I also have Educated by Tara Westover. I feel like I'm the only person left who hasn't read this book yet. This is a memoir all about Tara Westover's experiences of getting herself an education. She grew up as part of, I think it was called like the end of days. It was like this cult where she wasn't educated. She wasn't on any kind of like, she wasn't registered. She wasn't like allowed to get any kind of like medical care or anything. And this is about her journey to getting herself educated and discovering things and coming to terms with her upbringing. I've heard lots of phenomenal things about this one. And I think it's crazy that I haven't read it yet. I also have a wine Girl by Victoria James and this initially seemed like one that would be a bit strange for me to want to pick up. If you don't know, I don't drink alcohol. There is no deep-rooted traumatic reason for that as some people tend to expect. <laughs> so why would I want to read a book all about a, a girl whose like job it is to know about wine? But this book is about a young woman who is trying to make a success of herself, grappling with the difficulty she faces in her career but also the childhood trauma she has. I think this could be one that I really really love and really takes me by surprise. I I also have The Invisible Woman by Helen Wamsley Johnson. This is about the unfortunate trend of women being forgotten as they get older. So as they pass through their 40s and their 
is how society tends to neglect them and forget them. And I've realised this is something that I'm also doing in my reading. So I read a lot of books, I guess quite like Wine Girl, which are about young women trying to muzzle their way through, because that's what I can relate to. But I don't read a lot of books about older women. So I feel like I'm really like contributing to that and I don't want to. So I think this is going to be quite an eye-opening one for me. And as we talk about the young woman discovering herself and finding herself trend, <laughs> I also have Eat, Pray, Love by Elizabeth Gilbert. I think this might be the book that has been on my TBR longer than any other one. I don't know what it is about this book that makes me not want to read it. <laughs> I'm sure most of you already know the basic idea of this book even if you haven't read it. It is about the author who had quite a settled and successful life when she was in her 30s and then she goes through a divorce and then she goes to Rome, I think, to like find herself. So she goes to Rome and India and Bali. She takes a gap year. That's what I'm, that's what I'm getting from this. And I, I don't know. I feel like the vibe around this book is like, she's just very privileged. And maybe that's, maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. This has been such a formative book for so many women. I would love if you have any thoughts on this book to leave me a comment down below, or if you have thoughts on any of the books I've mentioned, because I don't know, I don't know what it is about this book. So that is it. They are all the nonfiction books that are on my TBR. As I said, I'm not going to talk about the books I have digitally, but do leave me a comment down below if you would be interested in me doing a video where I expose my audiobook TBR, because <laughs> there is quite a few books on there as well, but I do adopt a kind of out of sight, out of mind approach. <laughs> as I said, do leave me a comment down below and let me know if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them. If you want to find out more about them, they will all be linked down below in the description, as well as my coffee page and my social media links. If you want to connect with me elsewhere, you are more than welcome to. Anyways, that's all for me today. I hope you guys are doing well, and I will talk to you in my next video.